Well, praise God. It's good to be in Perry, Georgia. And I'm glad to be here with you tonight. It's a, it's a joy. I love you, Pastor, and his precious wife. And uh, we just, uh, uh, now listen, I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm pouring out of the right pot. <laughs> so uh, it just, and uh, I just, I just, uh, I'm, I'm excited about being here. It, it, I don't know if anyone has any control over the Department of Transportation in the state of Georgia. <laughs> but I got a few suggestions for them. If you'd see me after service. <laughs> yeah, I've been over every back road and pick path trying to miss. There's a place called McDonough. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, hallelujah. But we made it. The Lord will provide. They sing it in the song. Didn't that, hey, wasn't a worship team on tonight? I mean, that blessed me. You guys blessed me. Great job. Now, don't, I don't want to lose you when I give you the title for this message, okay? And I'm not like any other preacher. I'm just different. I just am what I am. Someone said, what do you try to be? I said, I don't know. I'm in trouble. I'm just plain old Mike. I'm a nobody telling everybody about somebody that'll save anybody. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, just what I am. But I'm in, uh, I'm going to get right into the message. I'm in Matthew chapter number 15 tonight. It's where I'm going to take my text. Uh, and I pray this will be a blessing to you. And I've preached here before and took my jacket off. You didn't panic, so I'm going to do that again if that's okay. Daddy said you can't work with a coat on, boy. You'll catch that in a few minutes. Matthew 15, verse number 21. I'm going to take my text here and a familiar story to Bible students. It's quite an experience this, this lady has when she, met, when she met the Lord. If you found that, shout amen for me. We'll get started. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her, Not a word. You have been there? And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him. Business is picking up. Saying, Lord, Help me. Lord, help me. There's not a person in this sanctuary tonight that doesn't, listen, that doesn't need some help from the Lord. You may think you're 10 feet tall and bulletproof, but my friend, when the devil shows up and the trouble comes, I'm telling you, there is but one that can overcome him and anything that comes against us. His name is Jehovah. Praise God forever. Lord, help me. Watch this. But he answered her and said, this is not the answer. This is not the answer she's looking for. It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Father, I love you, Lord. 
And I thank you for being in this place on this sanctified ground. And I've come to share what you put on my heart to these good people. God, there may be some here, no doubt, tonight that's needing some help from the Lord. And I'm depending on you, Lord, to fill my mouth and guard my tongue and preach me in sound, inside the bounds of this holy writ. And I pray, Lord, that it will touch the hearts of the people. And we'll see who we were and what we are. I'm going to praise you for what you're going to do. And I ask it tonight in the king's name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. And amen. I want to preach tonight on this thought. An old black dog. An old black dog. You stay with me. Say, what can that have to do with this? Now, let's see. In 2007, there was a woman named Leona Hemsley. Now, you young people don't know who that is, but she was called the mean, Queen of Mean. She was a socialite of New York and a, a very wealthy woman, and she was wicked to the core. And she died and wheeled $12 million to her dog. His name was Trouble. I would guess that everybody wanted a little trouble after she willed him $12 million. We're not looking for trouble tonight. I'm not looking for the $12 million. I found riches greater than that. Listen, I want us to think tonight about a dog in the Scripture. Dogs in the scripture is always in a negative context. There isn't anything good about a dog. When you find the scripture in Matthew 7 and 6, you'll find that dogs are despised. He said this. He said, give not that which is holy unto dogs. In other words, the dogs aren't worthy of the holy stuff. And don't cast your pearls before the swine. You remember the scripture. He says that the dogs that would refer to a dog being despised, don't give it to them. Then he says this. The Bible says this in Philippians 3, 2. said, listen, said, beware of dogs. Dogs are dangerous. Dogs will bite you. Anybody ever been dog bit? Dogs will bite you. They're dangerous. The scripture is telling us don't have anything to do with dogs. Don't give what you got to them. And beware of them lest you get bit. But there, not only that, Second Peter says it like this in 2 and 22. We see that dogs are disgusting in Scripture. He said dogs, according to the proverb, the true proverb, dogs are returned to their own vomit. That's pretty sad. Dogs, so dogs, scripturally, dogs is something that the Bible Tells us not to have anything to do with. Now, in this text, we see Jesus. Watch this. Now, this is going to help you. We see Jesus going into a region where the dogs are. He's going into Tyre and Sidon. But now he spent his time down there amongst his people. He's going to take a little trip north, 60 to 80 miles away. Walking, by the way, it took some effort for him to get there. He's going somewhere, brother, where the dogs dwell. And sure enough, how many people know if you go down to the pound, what you're going to find? He's headed to the dog pound. And what does he find? He finds a woman. And she said, she's got a great trouble in her life she has a daughter who is grievously vexed with a devil now I'm going somewhere with this hope oh, and uh, camera guy look I'm gonna be all over the place I, I just how I do they are they are she is grievously vexed with the devil now in American society we think that stuff doesn't exist anymore 
But let me tell you, brother, it's as prevalent today as it was in this day when Jesus went into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. I say maybe more prevalent. You got to be careful here. I'm not at my home church. The Bible said, neither give place to the devil. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. The reason they're there are they give place to the devil. They're standing on the wrong side of judgment in that valley, by the way. I've dealt with this one time in my ministry. I get a call from my church. By the way, it was former church members. How many, hey, pastor, you, they never, you lose them in the sanctuary, they never lose your number. Former church member calls me, my son has had a stroke, he's 30-something years old, he's in the hospital at Erlanger in Chattanooga, that's an hour and 45 minutes from my house, I need you down here now. You know what I do? I get in the car. I get in the car. And I go to Chattanooga. And I get down there and she's walking up and down in front of the door like this weeping. And she says, I don't know what's wrong with him. but They say he's had a stroke. Now I'm going somewhere. You stay with me. He's had a stroke. He's 36 years old. It was drug induced. She said, I can't explain what, how he's acting and what's wrong. Would you just go in and see if you can talk to him? And I walk in the room. I've never experienced this before nor after, and I care not to do it again. I walk into this room. God's my witness. He was. I walk into this room. It felt like a refrigerator. It was so cold in that room, I can't explain it. It was supernatural cold. This boy is in the bed. He is paralyzed on one side. He's got his good arm. He's reaching his bad arm and he's flipping it up over his head. And he's getting his good arm and lifting that, that incapacitated leg and flipping it around in the bed. He's mashed the buttons on the bed. The head of the bed is up. The foot is up. It kind of makes a V. He's down in the middle. I walk up to him, Brother Tracy. I say this. I say, hey, Chris. And I touched him and he went, Argh. I said, whoa. Uh, I said, Chris, Brother Mike. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I realized I'm dealing with something right here I never fought before. I'm trying to talk to this boy. He's growling like a dog. I mean, he's making all kinds of violent sounds, ugly and I, I'm, I'm just trying to talk to him. And I finally, I realize that I am not making any headway. But I know somebody who can. Mm -hmm. I get a hold of his hand. This boy's growling and barking and carrying on. I've never seen anything like it. I fall down in that nasty hospital floor and I get a hold of heaven. I begin to talk to my Savior. I said, in Jesus' name, I'm saying that help is on its way. Hey, Master, show up. We need some help. We need you now. I need that present help in trouble. I'm a looking for you, Lord. Touch this boy. He's growling like a dog. I get through praying. Now, I'm going to tell you. Don't get too spiritual on me tonight because everybody's prayed that prayer and thought, hey, nothing happened. I walk out of that room. I claim Jesus' blood, his stripes, his healing, his power, his provision. Nissi, Ratha, I mean, I'm naming all the Jehovah's. I said, I need you now. This boy needs you. I'm calling out. I get up. I don't think anything's happened. I walk outside, his mama's crying. She said, did you do any good? 
I said, I don't know. <laughs> you don't, you don't. I said, hey, I went in there. I've done the best I could. I've had prayer with him. I called on the Lord. And I don't know what he's going to do. I left her crying. In the, in the, Tim, brother, I left her there crying. And I got in the car and drove home defeated. I thought, man. The devil done wore me out in there. I get back home. It kicked on two or three days. My phone rings again. She said, hey, preacher, would you come back to Chattanooga? I thought, oh, oh. Listen, I know, I know all you would have charged down there going, oh, oh, Yeah, I know how you are. I walk in that room. I took my wife. I took my soulmate with me this time. I'm taking some help. <laughs> Two is better than one. <laughs> but we come to the locked door, and she waits in the waiting area. I walk up to the door. A guy opens the door and says, you're the pastor. I never saw this guy in my life. I said, I am. He said, go down to the nursing station. This is where you need to go. Really? I walked down to the nursing station. They looked at me and said, you're the preacher. I said, yeah, I am. He said, you passed his room up. He's down there on the left. We're in the lockdown unit. Down there on the left, he's waiting on you. I thought, oh, oh. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I walk, in, I walk to the door. The door is open. I step into the door. The boy's standing up in there. He's got a smile on his face. And he said, Brother Mike. He said, I've been waiting to see you. I don't know what happened. <laughs> hey, but something happened. And I'm doing a lot better today. What's your point on that, preacher? God don't have no problem with dogs. God don't have no problem with dogs. I want us to look at this scripture real quick. And then I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to let you go home. You'll come back tomorrow night fresh and excited about camp meeting. In this text, we see some things that I want to bring to our attention. And I'm going to tell you a story. She come and she called on him as the son of David and this Gentile dog had no right in that lineage. <clears throat> Is anybody with me? Say, why not? She's not a Jew. To the Jew first, also to the Greek. She's not a Jew. She doesn't have right in that lineage as the son of David. He ignores her. Oh, he heard what she said. He just doesn't respond. But then we get down, we get down, here, and, he, and he even says this. One, let me touch this part right here in verse 23. <clears throat> we had the quiet crowd there. You know what they said? She's crying after us. In other words, she's embarrassing us. She's making too much noise. Somebody said, you don't have to be loud like you are, preacher. No, but you're living in the quietest world you've ever been in. Whether you get the glory, praise God. They're not sitting in silence around the throne of God. Hey, they're on their feet worshiping the Lord in spirit. So next time you get around some of that quiet crowd, just embarrass them a little bit. Give them a holy hallelujah. I went, my, my family's, and I'm not knocking, somebody's watching this. I am not criticizing the Southern Baptist. I got family that's Southern Baptist. I, if they're a born again child of God, I don't care what shingles hung out over the door. But I go to a Southern Baptist revival. Uh, 
I walk in and sit down, and the preacher gets up. He's from Texas. You know them Texas preachers, huh? And he's preaching on hell that night. I thought, wow. And he got to preaching about hell, and he hit a point that said I didn't have to go and that I wasn't going, and I got a little happy. And I said, whoa, hallelujah. Hey, I could see him. It was like he mashed the gas just a little bit. Somebody in the room was with him. Oh, now he's about to put it on. He turned it on. Oh, hey, you're not going to hell. Whoa, amen. Ha. Now the crowd's getting nervous. The preacher's hooked up, and he's got somebody with him. This thing's over. I mean, I'm happy in the Lord. I'm a crying and a waving my arm. It gets over. Some woman come up to me and said, you that guy making all that noise? That'd be me. Preacher come up and said, man, I'm glad you was here. You helped me tonight. You helped me. Some of them don't like to make a little noise, get a little nervous. Somebody said, I'd come to, to you free will Baptist, all pray out loud at the same time. I said, yeah. He said, well, you're yelling and carrying on. He said, listen, God's not deaf. I said, he ain't nervous either. What about that? He understands us all at the same time. The quiet crowd. Then you, they try to send him away. But then she comes. Jesus says this to her in verse 27. Or he had told her, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. In verse 27, we see the acknowledging. You know what she says? Truth. Truth. How did she know that? How did she know that? She's a Gentile dog. She don't know him. She doesn't know the Old Testament. She doesn't, she's not familiar with the Pentateuch. She don't know the law of Moses. She's never heard these things before. How does she know that it's not right for him to take the bread of the children and to cast it to dogs? You know the only way she can know? If she thought of herself as a dog. She knew who she was and what she was and where she was at. She acknowledges that. She admits it. She tr says, true, Lord. John 17, 7, Jesus is praying on the way to Gethsemane. And he's, he's, he's preaching to the Father. And he said, that word is truth. He was the truth. The truth was speaking to the truth. And the truth said the truth is the truth. Hey, I am the truth and the way and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Isn't that good? It's the truth. She acknowledges that what he said is true. In other words, it would seem like a waste to take the bread and cast it to a dog. Jesus already said, I quote it to you, don't give that which is holy to the dogs. So she acknowledges that. Then we come down. When we come down to this, after the acknowledging, then we see what's this. Then we see her begin her argument. Whoa. She argues with the Lord. Well, she's already said it's truth, but then she adds this to it. To her acceptance is this. Yeah, Lord, but the dogs eat. From the crumb that falls from the master's table. Just give us just a crumb. If I can get a crumb. Mm, I felt that right there. Somebody in here tonight may just need a crumb. Mm. I'll just get under the table. I'll just get under the table. And when you drop something. When you drop something. I'll pick it up, <laughs> and I'll just take that crumb. Just let me be right here. Watch this. Watch this. Everything changed, though. 
First, he's ignoring her. In verse 25, it changed when she began to worship. Now, I love the praise. Don't get me wrong. I like to shout and run. And I used to be a lot more animated in my preaching. I've got old and crippled and had back surgery, and it slowed me down a little bit. But I like to praise with the best of them. I've been a pew jumper in my day. I mean, I've scared some people. I didn't mean to. wasn't trying to put on a show. Say, why you do that? I said, don't have a clue. Just take off. I'll get somewhere else. That's the old boy that's laid at the gate beautiful Why he went into the house leaping, jumping, praising God. When you find him, ask him if he can answer it. I'll say amen to what he says. But I like the praise. But I like the worship. Praise is always up. Worship's always down. Worship is down. And he seeketh such to worship him in spirit and truth. God's looking for this. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That's an expectation placed upon us. He's expecting you to pray. If you're breathing tonight, I think you're breathing. You're still conscious. Give him praise. Give him praise. But I'm going to tell you, if you want to get next to his heart, you give him worship. Worship is down. Worship is, I am not exalted. They can't see me. I'm in a corner somewhere. I'm hidden. When this woman said, Lord, and began to worship, the whole game plan changed. Everything changes then. I wasn't going to go here, but I, I feel compelled to do it, Tim. My brother, his wife, my nephew, his wife, and two babies died in a house fire in 22. The day of, after Christmas. And I get a phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning from the fire chief who attends my church. He's the assistant fire chief. He attends my church. I get a call from him, and he asked me, he said, Hey, where, does Trent live on Plateau Road? I said, yes, he does. He said, Mike said, his house's on fire. He said, I don't think anybody survived this. And I call the phone, and I'm yelling at the telephone like it's going to make any difference. And I, he's my baby brother, the youngest of four. And I'm yelling at the phone, answer the phone, boy! No answer. And I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I show up, smoke, the stench, the yellow tape. The policemen, the firemen, they're all up there on me asking questions. My nephew, who's the only surviving child of this family that just perished, has pulled into the driveway now. They're, they've, they've, they've bombarded him, asking all these questions. We have no answers. We don't know. All we know is both vehicles are in the driveway, which we assume it's, it's about 8 degrees below zero that night. I detest cold weather. When I get to heaven, I'll never be cold again. Somebody says, I like ice and snow. I said, God's got a special place for you. <laughs> Put you in the frosty land up there. Leave the rest of us down there around the throne. Praise God. <laughs> We're praying. I'm telling you, this, this, this is, it does something to me, preacher. I never had this before. I got in a place I'd never been before. I didn't know what to do. Couldn't hardly pray. I didn't know what to say. People try to be kind. Listen, let me give you some advice from someone who's been through a tragedy. Don't tell them you know how they feel. Just tell them you love them and you're praying for them. Best advice you can give. I love you and I'm praying for you. And I got through this and I, I'm trying to preach my way out of it. I'm trying to sing my way out of it. I'm trying to praise my way out of it. And I'm telling you, I'm a good friend of mine, Mike Blanton, I heard him singing the song today in another meeting up in Ohio. They're singing, Don't Let the Battle Steal Your Praise. The Blythe family wrote that song. And it's a great song, but I'm telling you, the battle had stole my praise. I couldn't, get any, I couldn't do any good in the praise department. And I crawled under my old singer sewing machine one night. It's my holy place. If you don't have a holy place, let me recommend you get you one. 
You sanctify that place, and that's where I'm going to meet with the Lord. Mine's a four-leg singer sewing machine. Does, the machine doesn't even work, but oh my, that case. I grab a hold of that thing like the horns of the altar. I've got it, the carpet is wore out where I pray under this. I grab a hold of that one night, and I went past the praying, Brother Stacy prayed. And I got into the worship. And I said, God, if you took my wife and my one son and my daughter-in-law and my only grandson, if you take it all, I say, you're still God. And I'm going to worship you until I see you. Praise God until you bring me around the throne. I'm just going to worship you no matter what come my way. You know what? Things got better. Worship makes things better. Worship changed the atmosphere here. He has, listen, God can't lie, and he has to receive worship. He receives the worship. She says, that's a truth, Lord, that you don't do that. She is, and then, and then she has the answer. She said, she, and he says this to her. Great is thy faith. She's got a girl that's grievously vexed. She's about to be better. She's about to be better. Be it unto you, even as thou wilt. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a tall order. Only God can fulfill that. You know what he does? He embraces the old dog. She's never the same anymore. She's met the master. She's fed from the bread. God has helped her. It changes her forever. Brother, the picture, please. That's not a show dog, by the way. So what has that got to do with this message, preacher? Let me illustrate it. I'm in my backyard one day doing a little work, some sort, flower beds, getting up leaves. I live in an oak grove. You folks don't know what that is down here, but that's when there's a million trees around you and they all lose their leaves in the fall. And I'm out there doing some work, and I hear something behind me, and I turn around and look, and here comes this bear running at me headlong. And I thought, well, I may about be about to be dog bit. And he comes running up to me, and you know what he does? He slides down and rolls over, shows me his belly. So, I don't know about you, but when an old dog shows me his belly, <laughs> how you doing? Now, I'm, I'm real creative. You're going to get that. Uh, I, I don't know this dog's name. I don't know where this dog come from. I never saw this dog before in my life. This dog just come running up to me and was friendly to me in my own backyard, rolled over, and I rubbed his belly, and I called him Blackie. I mean, I could have called him Frosty with that nose that he's got. And he just, he just hangs around. But that, I'm telling you, doesn't matter where I go, old, old Blackie's right there. I thought, what are you doing here? You're not my dog. Come loose back here. You're not my dog. Old Blackie's. And then we, pretty soon he's running circles around barking at me, wanting me to play. Let, let me teach you something about dogs. Don't ever pat them on the head. Would you hook this back? Don't ever pat the dog on the head. They don't like it. Say, well, my dog does. Pat your neighbor on the head and see how they like it. <laughs> they don't like it. But they like belly rubs. Don't do that to your neighbor. <laughs> mm. No. Oh, Blackie runs around the house there for a while. I go in the home. I go in the house. 
He just takes off through the woods after he's gone. A day or two later, I'm out there doing something else. Here he comes again. Here he comes. My neighbor calls me and said, hey, you got your dog? I said, he's not my dog. He said, well, he's awful friendly. I said, I don't know why he's this way. Hey, he just showed up. I rubbed his belly. He likes me. It kicks on a day or two like that. I'm going somewhere. Oh, Blackie, this becomes an everyday event. If I'm out in the yard, but somehow, this dog, I don't know where he comes from. He doesn't belong to the houses just through the woods. I don't know where he comes from. He's showing up at my house. I come to the back door one day. There he sat, just like that. He's sitting there just like that looking at me. Them flopped ears. And I said, you want something to eat? I, t I declare that someone else must have asked him that. He understood. <laughs> Woo! I go in, and I get him a piece of bread. Now, how many know you got dogs? You ever been around dogs? Do dogs, just plain white loaf bread, we call it at home, isn't a dog's favorite. Blackie loved it. I just opened the door, tossed it to him. He grabs it in his mouth, down the steps, across the yard, out through the woods. Blackie's gone. The next morning, Brother Tim, 7 a.m., I'm sitting at my table. Here's how my day goes every day. I may have said this last year. Every day, I wake up, a pot of coffee, three Tootsie Rolls, and the Word of God. Breakfast of champions every day. We started to leave the house today. Before we left our home, I looked at my wife. Do you have? I've got your Tootsie Rolls in the car. I'm sitting at the table. I'm drinking my coffee. I'm reading my chapters. I've got the Tootsie Rolls laying there. I hear on the back, on the back porch. I get up, I give him a piece of bread, open the door, toss him the bread, catch it in his mouth, down the steps, across the yard, through the woods. Every now and then, he turns back and looks at me just to see if I'm watching. And off he goes. Now, this goes on for a long time. It went on so long that I felt bad about just giving him bread, and I began to give him some bologna, too. I'm growing kind of fond of the old dog. I, and I could throw him a piece of bologna. He could inhale it, swallow it, never chomp. Go. I'd never chew it. An entire piece of bologna. But then I'd give him the bread. He wouldn't leave until he got the bread. I'd give him the bread. I'd take the bread down the steps, across the yard, through the woods, and occasionally turn around and look, see if I still watch him. I'm getting ready to go preach a camp meeting in Tampa, Florida. And I didn't have a clue what I was going to preach. I'm sitting at the table trying to find something to preach. And I hear the old dog at the back steps. Or Darrell, I walk over there. I know what he wants. And I've already got the bread in my hand. And I look at that dog. That's the picture of him. I snapped that picture that day. I look at that old dog that day and the Holy Ghost. Now, he may not speak to you like he does me, but through the most unusual things. I mean, I'm telling you, we are not fleshly beings having spiritual experiences. We are spiritual beings having fleshly experiences. And one day, one day through the most unusual things, the Holy Ghost begins to deal with my heart. And I looked at that old Frosted nosed cur, I mean mixed breed, Heinz 57. He's got a little of everything in him. And when I looked at them, the Holy Ghost says to me, It speaks to my spirit. He does, said, You're just like that old black dog. And I just begin to weep. Because here's what he reminded me of You just show up at my house. 
You can't do anything for me. I do everything for you. You're of no benefit to me. But I give you bread anyway. And every time you show up at my house, woo, I'm a feeling him right now. Every time you show up at my house, I break open a loaf and give you a piece of bread. Hey, and I never fail to feed you every time you just show up. Hey, I don't have to do it. I just like you. I thought that's me. That's me. I was just going about my own business one day, and I run headlong into the Lord. And I'm just an old Gentile dog. I'm not a purebred Jew. Listen, I'm just an old Gentile out here that God saved by His grace. And I run headlong into Him. And you know what? He doesn't more than rub my belly. He saved my soul. He washed me in his own crimson red blood. And he put me in the family. And hey, every time I've ever come to his house, he's been faithful to give me. He don't just give me a crumb, my friend. <laughs> hey, he gives me the whole loaf. He's fed me over and over and over again. How many times has he fed you? How many times have you come and you don't have what you need? And he said, here's your crumb or a piece or a loaf. I've got what you need. They sung the song tonight. I've got what you need. All you got to do is show up at my table. You will not leave wanting. Just show up. Let me feed you. I've got something for you. You know what she got? She got exactly what she needed. She's asking. Get a hold of this. She's asking for someone else. She didn't say, Lord, heal me. Lord, save me. She just had faith knowing that if she could get to his table, he had bread and some to spare. Can I tell you, church, tonight, listen, he's got crumbs. Sometimes that's all I need. Sometimes, Brother Tim, flying high, man. I mean, everything's going good. I catch every traffic light, and it's all green. There's no slow drivers in the left lane. I'm going down the road. Everything's good. I get to the revival. I preach. The Holy Ghost consumes me. Moves upon the congregation. People come. People saved. God it restores and helps and heals and supplies. And everything's good. And just a crumb does me that. Sometimes a crumb won't do. I need at least a slice. I need at least a slice. Lord, I need you to give me a little bigger piece than just a crumb. Can you, can you, spare, a, can you spare a slice for me tonight? And I'll tell you what I've never done. I've never come to your table and ask him for a slice. That he didn't give me that and more. Sometimes we feel like an old black dog. We just come. We just come. And he does what he does. He does what only he can do. He supplies every need. He knows what you need tonight. You may be here and the crumbs all you need. You may need a slice. You may need the whole loaf. You may be dealing, fighting, battling, troubled. I met a girl at the restaurant this afternoon named Nicole. Said she attended your church. 
dealing with cancer. So uh, she was familiar with you. I mentioned your name. Oh, yeah. Said so our church, churches joined together. Obviously, she knows something about it. And she said, I'm battling cancer. This is my second row round of chemo. And her name's Nicole. And it's my second round of chemo. And I come through and I took her by the hand. I said, Nicole, I said, I'll be praying for you. I said, friend, she needs more than a crumb. She works at the Long Horn Steakhouse over here. She, she needs more than a crumb. But I tell you, praise God. I know the one that's got it. I know the one that's got it. <laughs> I know he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Just show up. <laughs> hey, Oh, Blackie, you bark at me every now and then. Sometimes I feel just like it. I'm just barking to the Lord. I'm crying out to the Lord. I'm making noise. I don't care who sees, who hears. It's not about them. It's about the Lord and me. And I'm saying, God, I need you now. I need it right now. I don't need it tomorrow. I need you now. <laughs> hey, and he comes through. He comes through. Praise him coming back. Come on. Hey. Let me ask you tonight. I, I, I wrestled with this. I thought, Lord, I don't know what the others preached on. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. We're not, it's not a competition, by the way. Listen, I, I'm not jealous. Uh, you got the lot, bottom of the barrel, brother, and you call me. I'm preaching. Listen, you let the other brothers preach. I'll get back in the shadow somewhere and say, bless them, double God. But I want to bring you something that God wants you to have. I want to bring you something that God wanted you to have. And you know what? Come on, sister. You know what? Here it is. Just wants to give you some bread, right? Whatever you need. He wants you to have some bread. We're at the master's table. Listen, and we're not the dogs anymore. He's get this, get this. He's the only one that can do anything for a dog. <laughs> he told the others not to do it. Why? Because he's the only one who can. And he says, Would you like some bread? <laughs> Hey, I'm a dropping it from the table. Take what you want. You can have it. You can have it. Oh, God. Feed us bread, Lord. Go ahead, guys. Stand with me tonight. You need prayer, you need healing, you need help. Listen, he's still the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I need something from heaven. What do you need tonight? Listen, you can receive it where you are. Or you can come forward and pray. It doesn't make no difference to me. It's not the position of the body. It's the condition of the heart. God knows he sees your heart right now. He knows what you need. You need it, you ask him. Father, Lord, help us tonight. Thank you for the bread. I praise you, God. You illustrated it to me through an old black dog. Thank you for the bread, Lord. Bless this place for your glory in Jesus' name. Can I trust in God? I'll be glad to pray with you. Thank you, brother.
You need something tonight? Come, we'll ask him together. That's what he's looking for. That right there. Listen to me. Man, that's a word right there. Pastor Mike was preaching. He was talking about that dog. I got to thinking, I just ministered on this a couple weeks ago. In 2 Samuel, King David sent for Jonathan's son. He said, he said bring, his, bring his son, Mekilzadek. When Mekilzadek came, he looked at David. He said, what am I but a dead dog to you? David looked at him and said, you're no longer a dead dog. That's right. You're going to sit at my table. Tonight, I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I'm here to tell you this. All you got to do is come to the King. He's got a place for you at His table. They're going to sing this one more time. And whatever you need, if you need somebody to pray with you, we'll pray with you. If you just want to come and get to the altar yourself, he said this, he said, worship changes the atmosphere. Whatever you need, come worship the King. Go ahead.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you're here tonight, and I listen, I'd rather miss it than not say, but if you're here tonight, I just the Lord, the Lord impressed upon me. If you're here tonight, and you're, you're you're having problems with your right hand. It's your right, it's like it's going numb. You're you're losing feeling in your right hand. If that's you, anybody in here, you're losing feeling in your right hand. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you need a touch tonight from God, man, the anointing is in the house. God wants to touch you. Anybody in here, you just need something from the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I just thank you for the word tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the crumb, for the bread. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. With every head bowed, with every eye closed, no one's looking. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Tim, if I died tonight, heaven forbid, if I died tonight, I don't know for sure that I'd go to heaven. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I'm just, maybe I've been coming to church for a while, maybe it's my first time in church, I don't know, but if I died tonight, I don't know that I'd go to heaven. Would you pray for me? I, I want to get my heart right with God. If that's you, no one's looking. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, would you just lift your hand, wave at me? If you're in here, we need to pray for you. You want to get your heart right with the Lord, would you just wave at me? Anybody in this place? Maybe, maybe you've been saved. Maybe, maybe you've, you've prayed that prayer before, but you just said, you know, I've walked away. I've made some decisions. I'm not where I need to be, and I want to get back in the Father's arms. If that's you, just lift your hand. Anybody in here? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you again for your many blessings. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of those that are here in the altar, the lives of those that are in the seats, those that are watching online. You're mending hearts. You're mending hearts tonight, Lord. People are being touched, Father, and we thank You for it. Hallelujah. Thank You. Now, Father, I pray the blessings of the Lord upon each and every one of these that are here tonight. I pray that you'd go with them and keep them safe and protected. Let no plague, no pestilence, no harm come near their dwelling. Lord, go with them and, and go with them tomorrow as they go to work. And Lord, I just pray for a great night's sleep. I pray for supernatural rest. I pray for open doors of opportunity to share the Word with someone to just let somebody know that Jesus loves them. Lord, go with them and touch them, Lord. Bring them back tomorrow. Fill this house, Lord, not, not for numbers, not for me, not for, for, for anybody else, Lord. It's not about that. But Lord, bring them so that they would come to know You. Bring them so that they could be refreshed. Bring them so that they can receive from the Master's bread. Holy, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We give you praise for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, they're going, the music will play. If you need to come pray, we'll be here. If you need something, I'll be right down here at the stage. I'll wait on you. I'll pray with you. Whatever you need, we just want to pray for you. Tell somebody, bring them back tomorrow. We're going to have Pastor Jay Bailey here tomorrow night. So bring somebody, invite somebody to come. You won't want to miss it. Didn't Pastor Mike McCoy do a great job? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have a blessed evening. We'll see you tomorrow.